Ella Flagg Young, the third child in a working-class family, was born on January 15, 1845, in Buffalo, New York. Ella did not attend school till she was 10 years old, but had a passion for teaching. While she was not able to attend school, she still worked hard and taught herself how to read and write. When Ella was 10, she finally went to school, but soon dropped out because she believed it was not challenging enough. Her family also did not support her in school. At age 15, she took the certification examination, hoping to become a teacher. To her dismay, she was too young to teach. Ella was destined to become a teacher. Through all of her hard work and trials, she decided to learn in a classroom instead of learning on her own. She graduated at age 17 from the Chicago Normal School and studied at the University of Chicago. After many years of studying, she received her Ph.D. in 19,000. Ella was 55 years old at the time. When Ella had graduated from Chicago Normal School in 1862, she taught primary school for a few years. Then she became the principal from 1865 through 1871. Ella then taught school, high school from 1871 to 1875 and became the principal of grammar school soon after from 1875 to 1877. For 12 years after 1887, Ella was a, the assistant superintendent of Chicago schools. She did not stop there. While she studied to receive her Ph.D., she was appointed Associate Profes Professor of Pedagogy at the University of Chicago. She became a full professor after she received her Ph.D. Ella became the principal of the Chicago Normal School a second time in 1905 and received her highest calling as a superintendent of Chicago schools in 1909. Ella Flagg Young was the first woman to be at the head of a school system in a major city. In 1915, Ella resigned as superintendent. She died on October 26, 1918, in Washington, D.C. Ella had lived to be 73 years old. Ella Flagg Young is an important person in the progressive education movement. Young proposed that teaching methods should give fullest expression to the individual interests of, of the child that education should be recognized, should recognize the total experiences the child brings to the school, and that the curriculum should prov provide this child with experiences that build on his or her natural interests and dispositions. History of Philosophy of Education, First Edition. She believed that ch teaching should be for the child's benefit and what they learned is what they want and need to learn. When Ella was the superintendent, she organized teachers' councils where teachers could speak up about the decision-making in, in the schools. She made it possible for teachers to feel like they had a say in what and how they taught. Ella also encouraged principals to be instructional leaders as well. Even though many of the superintendents were considered part of the cult of efficiency, Ella was the total opposite. She opposed the idea of mechanizing the work of the teachers and sought to give teaching voice in decision making. Ella even sought to raise teacher salaries, increase the professionalism of teaching, and supported their right to become part of the union. Ella started teaching clubs where teachers could get together and discuss issues in the school and in teaching in general. Teaching clubs also soon spread all over Chicago, and it was not rare to see many clubs in elementary schools. Ella Flagg Young was, still, was and still is a great contributor to teaching. She made it possible for teachers to have a say in decision making, something that teachers uh, want to have. Ella even made it possible for teachers to get a higher salary. This is something that teachers should thank Ella for. Teachers may still want a higher salary, but because of Ella, teachers get more than they did in the 1900s, and more so. Ella also created a group where teachers could get together and work with one another to create a plan on how and what to teach. Without Ella, 
Teachers would still not have a say in what and how they taught, and they would not be part of a union. In 1911, Ella Young stated, To announce a theory of education as fixed, determined, all comprehensive, develops uncertainty and unrest in the teaching poor. Not the sense of unrest that urges on to achievement of better things, but the feeling of, of unrest that comes from a consciousness of insecurity in the support upon which one learns. It also minimizes responsibility and creates uncertainty. Ella did not agree with the idea of having fixed education. She believed that the subject being taught in school should be ones that are of interest to the students and will help them in life. Because of Ella, we are able to determine what we want to teach based on the children's interests and educational level. Ella Flagg Young was a great person. Throughout her whole life, she devoted herself to teaching and learning. She created so many opportunities for women teachers that still help us today, such as teaching clubs and the ability to choose what to teach and how to teach. Some people may not realize how great she is become how great she is because she was not like any other cult like superintendent but she was in fact a greater superintendent than the rest in 1924 the chicago public school system the school where ella originally studied and taught named an elementary school in her honor can this not prove how important and great ella flag young was